hello, hello, hello. Merry Christmas. You know, I want to bring something up. And I wrote about this once. I don't have that blog anymore, but I wrote about it at a certain point in time. You know, during the 2016 election, there were these horribly racist and misogynistic messaging that came about. One of the things that I saw, and unfortunately I saw it on the internet, but then I saw it in person on an actual sign that was being carried by protesters identified with organized labor organizations. It was in Houston. It was a sign that said, if it weren't for immigrants, Trump wouldn't have any wives. And then the other one said, I'll trade one of Trump's wives for 10,000 immigrants. And I saw these signs and I was very disheartened with all the other stuff that was going on during the campaign that should justifiably have been challenged about his campaign tactics. There was also the fact that the other side's campaign tactics, which I experienced firsthand, were not likewise challenged. But more than that was how it could be considered acceptable that some people who were from the former Soviet Union were allowed to be identified as a commodity in the form of an immigrant available for swapping for other commodities in the form of other immigrants. That's how it really went down. You're talking about a immigrant woman from one particular comportment contextualization being available for swapping for a certain other kind of immigrant that has a different comportment and a different context. I didn't understand especially how people involved with organized labor and especially organized labor groups that claimed to be representing people that were themselves immigrants would have ever allowed for that kind of messaging to be associated with their campaign and why nobody called it out or challenged it. And I think that's absolutely where the whole Russian hacking scam actually came to play. I think that's really where it started is that there is, whether explicitly or implicitly understood, to be a different valuation on people who are immigrants from different countries. And this sort of subtext is that certain people can get away with things uh, that other people can't. And the kinds of things you can get away with are based upon what is allowed to be associated with your demographic. It's part of the criticisms that for many years were levied against white supremacy and white privilege and understanding that in the United States by looking a certain way you are allowed to pass as having a kind of credibility or having a kind of understanding of safety when in proximity to certain resources that people that don't have white skin don't have and so then the question becomes well what are we talking about on the international market of human commodification. Certain people who are immigrants from certain countries are valued differently than other immigrants from other countries. And somehow there was never an opportunity presented to see the fact that the first lady might be an immigrant as being somehow an actual understanding of how we could address immigrants' rights and how we could also address the rights of first ladies, including our own selves as first ladies, including our own histories, however many generations back of immigration. Not only that, but the first lady and the president have a child that has one parent who was not born in the United States and one parent that does. And how many other people in this country are living with that experience right now. How much of the Obama legacy was specifically about appealing to that demographic and how much of what we're dealing with sociopolitically, including student loan debt, is specifically connected to political ambitions that were connected to identifying voting blocks in the form of people who either had one 
parent that was a citizen and one parent that was not, or that themselves are first generation immigrants. It's been four years. That opportunity has been completely where? Ready to go. Let me ask you, during this whole Russian hacking scam, just how many immigrants from other countries were decided to be acceptable as a swap on the first lady? Did anybody do the calculus? Did anybody keep track of the tax wave-offs? I say this because I believe that recently I put a video online making a direct overture toward the First Lady. And I got something. I got something back just the other night. Whether it's a direct response from the First Lady or not, I don't know. But I believe, if nothing else, it is connected to other things associated with what I have been able to see publicly identified with the First Lady. And in this case, I'm very grateful. I had at some point in the last several years come up with an element of what could have been a very important uh, social investment. It's absolutely relevant right now, and it's not specific and isolated just to my experiences in the United States. As a matter of fact, there was already, before I even began uh, thinking about it for myself, a global effort to address these matters. There's also a very significant history within the United States of political activism around that area and in different communities that doesn't fit into the conventional or stereotypical understandings of what collective bargaining or labor rights have, especially when it comes to political affiliation. And seeing as how we're in this transitional situation, it's important to acknowledge the contributions that come and from whence they come. And so I'm acknowledging that insofar as there might have been any support of my uh, appreciation of and intent to engage around appropriate uh, infrastructure development specifically associated with water conservation that takes into account the most uh, basic and first uh, use which is in our own home specifically around meeting our hygiene needs then I'm very grateful and I'm very appreciative for the support that I received on that level. And I wish the First Lady and her family a Merry Christmas. And I also will make this public because I hope America understands that we all have within us a First Lady. And we all have within us a First Gentleman. And I would hate for my First Lady or for my First Gentleman to not be appreciated for all they have to offer.